Good morning, dear friends. Today, I'd like to discuss with you this beautiful paper just published on the European Heart Journal called uh, entitled Bone Marrow Activation in Response to Metabolic Syndrome and Early Atherosclerosis. This is an extremely important paper, and I think you know some people may have missed uh, or under uh, not well understood the importance of, of these findings. And uh, so I'll try to explain from my point of view as a uh, expert of uh, aging and healthy longevity why it's so important. This paper by Val Valentin Fuster. Um, by the way, let me just uh, introduce myself. Uh, some friends told me uh, uh, that I should introduce myself because, of course, not, not everybody knows who I am. And, and uh, so I'm Luigi Fontana. I'm a physician scientist. I'm a professor of medicine and nutrition. I'm the uh, Leonard Ullman Chair in Translational Metabolic Health at the University of Sydney and the director, the scientific director of the uh, Charles Perkins Center, Royal Prince Alfred Clinic, and the uh, director of the Healthy Longevity um, Research and uh, um, uh, Clinical Program at Charles Perkins Center in Sydney. Okay, so, uh, let's start to discuss this, this beautiful paper and why it's important. So it is important because for the first time, this paper clearly demonstrates that the bone marrow activation that is driven by uh, a number of factors, metabolic factors, and in this paper in particular, they show you know, uh, abdominal obesity is the most important one, hyperinsulinemia and all the uh, markers of the metabolic syndrome score are highly correlated with the uh, activation of the bone marrow that has been measured by uh, uh, PET positron emission tomography and MRI. And, uh, and this uh, bone marrow activation is strongly correlated with uh, the uh, incorporation into the arteries of uh, the uh, fluorodeoxyglucose that basically is a biomarker of macrophage infiltration. And again, this uh, inflammation infiltration of macrophages measured by PET correlates with the volume of the plaques. So basically, uh, in uh, apparently healthy individuals, the bone marrow uptake of these uh, uh, of of these of this tracer of these fluorodeoxyglucose is associated with the metabolic syndrome and its components. Even in the absence, I'm going to show you in 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 a, in a, in a few minutes uh, in the absence of systemic inflammation. And with uh, this uh, uh, bone marrow activation is associated with elevated counts of circulating leukocytes. This is extremely important. I'm gonna tell you why and why you can measure it and why it's so important, how you can change, how can reduce the, these leukocytes, circulating leukocytes. Uh, uh, and bone marrow activation is associated with early atherosclerosis, characterized by high arterial metabolic activity. Uh, therefore, bone marrow activation appears to be an early um, factor in atherosclerosis development. So this is extremely, extremely important. Let me show you a few, 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 few slides, a uh, few, few, few figures, you know, just to, to make this point. So if you, have, if you have bone marrow activation, as you can hear, you know, you have an increased production of leukocytes and red blood cells that are circulating in, 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 in the blood, in the bloodstream, and they go everywhere, including in the arteries, where if there is already a plaque, 
this is basically growing, becoming more inflamed. There is more immune activation, more erosion, and more risk of heart attack and other and other problems. But of course, you know, these circulating white blood cells, they also go in other organs that are, you know, scarred or they have, you know, other condition, cancer, and there, you know, they have also a detrimental effect. We're gonna talk about this later. So uh, as you can see here in this paper, um, it's a very long and complicated, but just, I'm just gonna show you the, the most important one factors. Um, you see the bone marrow activation measured with the PET is basically higher in men and is higher in those with metabolic syndrome, with obesity, in particular central obesity is a major uh, risk factor for bone marrow activation, hypertension, hyperinsulinemia, again important because in the previous video, I told you that, you know, insulin resistance driven by abdominal obesity is causing compensatory hyperinsulinemia that is driving aging through the activation of the insulin antifrontal pathway. And of course, you know, there is an increased number of leukocytes and red blood cells, neutrophils, monocytes, and C-reactive protein and ferritin. There is another uh, uh, inflammatory marker. And... Uh, let me show you some other important, uh, you see here, central obesity is extremely important in the progression of bone marrow activation, hypertension, dyslipidemia as well, and metabolic syndrome score. Uh, and um, and what I want to show you here is that, uh, that basically all the factors of the metabolic syndrome score are higher in those with uh, bone marrow activation. You can see here central obesity, highly significant is higher. Triglycerides are higher in those with bone marrow activation. Uh, they have lower HDL cholesterol, higher fasting glucose, significant, higher systolic blood pressure, higher diastolic blood pressure, again, uh, very important. And, and, and finally, what I want to show you is that the volume of the plaques, of the atherosclerotic plaques, it's higher in those with bone marrow activation and increased vascular uptake uh, compared uh, with those uh, uh, with a low uh, 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 bone marrow activation. And interestingly, finally, uh, uh, even in those without systemic inflammation in the subgroup with those without systemic inflammation with normal high sensitive C-reactive protein, those with higher metabolic syndrome score markers, all of them, they have higher bone marrow activation. So again, very, very important paper. And why is important? It is important because it finally helped me to connect the dots of something that I always knew. When I started to work on calorie restriction in humans, one of the hallmarks of calorie restriction in all the people who were practicing calorie restriction without malnutrition, so therefore they were eating less calories without malnutrition was a very low uh, uh, immune cells, circulating immune cells, neutrophils, total leukocytes, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes. So I could tell if someone was on color restriction just based on their uh, leukocytes, neutrophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes uh, circulating levels. Uh, typically, normal people, they have, you know, the normal range is between 4,000 and 10,000. These people, most of them, they had less than 4,000. Some people, even 3,000 circulating white blood cells. Now, this was a cross-sectional study. And then, you know, when we performed the calorie trial, two years of moderate calorie restriction, 12% calorie restriction. So you don't need extreme calorie restriction, 12% less that resulted in a 8% weight loss. What we found, as you can show you here in a second, in this paper we published in Aging Cell, is that 
the in red you see the people on CR and these are controls there is a significant linear reduction in total white blood cells in lymphocytes neutrophils highly significant monocytes and uh, of course there was a reduction in C-reactive protein TNF alpha and other biomarkers with no impairment because we vaccinated people with uh, uh, for for tetanus candida uh, and uh, and uh, also for influenza, hepatitis B, and we found basically no 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 difference in adaptive immunity, despite a, a significantly lower number of circulating monocytes and lymphocytes. So. Again, this is important because not only with color restriction, but also with exercise, we have shown you can lower your circulating white blood cells. And the reason is that, you know, if you have less insulin, less growth factors, less uh, bioavailable testosterone, estradiol, IGF-1, your um, uh, hematopoietic stem cells are proliferating less. They are proliferating normal, you know, healthy physiology. Basically, there is uh, no growth factors, no inflammation. There are normal level of lipids and uh, glucose and other factors. And therefore, there is a, a normal age-related clonal hematopoiesis. But if you have, you know, these uh, uh, metabolic syndrome, uh, high growth factors, high inflammatory factors, you have an increased... Um, hematopoietic stem cell proliferation. Therefore, you have more production of in circulating uh, immune cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that are increasing atherosclerosis as it has been shown in this cell paper in animals. And now with that paper that I just show you even in humans. And the other important stuff, you know, is that these accelerated clonal hemoproteases is, of course, increasing. I told you in previous videos that, you know, whenever you have increased cell proliferation, you start to have genomic instability because you have random mutation that are increasing the risk of, mutate, uh, of driver mutation. And therefore, you have this clonal hematopoiesis that is increasing the risk, for example, of um, hematologic cancers. So people with more uh, uh, clonal hematopoiesis, they have an increase of uh, uh, leukemia, lymphoma, and other tumors. And most importantly, what we know is that uh, if you have these mutations in your immune cells, like this paper in Nature shows, clearly shows, you know, this is a an animal model where they deleted a, a gene that is important for uh, DNA repair, and therefore these uh, these um, it is the ERCC1. In uh, so this is a deletion only in the immune cells, in the stem cells, and as you can see here, there is more DNA damage in these uh, uh, in these. Uh, stem cells, immature stem cells with an increased DNA damage, the ox, uh, aid, uh, oxy, uh, deoxyguanosine. And what is interesting is that, you know, these, these uh, uh, damaged, DNA damaged immune cells that are circulating and they are going into other tissues, they are causing aging of many other tissues. In fact, you know, P16 and P21 are biomarkers of cell senescence. And as you can see here, there is an increase uh, P16 and P21 in the aorta, lung, liver, pancreas, gastrointestinal, kidney, heart, brain. <clears throat> and uh, not only that, there is also an increase uh, damage because there is an increase in liver enzymes, urinary proteins, so uh, kidney problems, liver problems, uh, cartilage problems. So there is a systemic aging driven by uh, these uh, damage caused to the DNA repair capacity. So there is more DNA damage in the immune cells. And interestingly, when they uh, uh, 
put you know basically these uh, these cells into normal in wild type mice uh, you still see basically an increase in, in systemic uh, aging and damage to multiple organs. So again, very, very important. So we know that all these metabolic hormonal alterations that are driving cell proliferation in multiple tissues, including the uh, hematopoietic stem cells that you can measure based on your circulating uh, Y blood cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes. So every doctor can measure that and see how many you have circulating. If you have without infections, when you have no infection, but if you have higher circulating Y blood cells, it means that you know your stem cells, your, your bone marrow stem cells, they are producing more, they are proliferating more and they're producing more uh, circulating leukocytes. And again, you know, as I told you, we know that uh, calorie restriction in particular and exercise, they have a powerful effect in reducing the circulating leukocyte, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, because uh, these, these interventions, these lifestyle intervention, they are uh, improving all the metabolic syndrome score. We published that, you know, in several papers, including the last one in Lancet Diabetes Endocrinology. Um, and uh, and they, they are improving insulin sensitivity, therefore reducing secret insulin, uh, bioavailable IGF-1 and testosterone, estradiol and, uh, and pro-inflammatory cytokines. So um, hope, I hope you know, this, uh, this, uh, this video is going to be useful and is going to give you a better understanding of how different, disease, different metabolic conditions can, that can be addressed by healthy lifestyle factors they are driving multiple pathology. In, 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 in particular, they are driving the cell proliferation cascade that is responsible for atherosclerosis, cancer, uh, uh, and um, accelerated aging. Thank you for listening, as always.